Why do we need orbital refueling? Let's be clear. Orbital refueling isn't just important, it's essential. Without it, deep space missions simply don't work. Back in the Apollo era, we brute forced our way to the moon. Giant rockets, single shots, no turning back. But that model, it's not scalable. It took over 400,000 people, $25 billion in 1960s dollars, and a space race to make it happen. Fast forward to today, the goals are bigger. Mars, long-term lunar bases, even asteroid mining. But here's the catch. Rockets today still carry the same problem they did 60 years ago. Fuel takes up space, lots of it. And here's the shift. Instead of carrying all the fuel from Earth, why not top up once we're already in space? That's the genius. That's the game changer. Think about it. Launching a fully loaded starship from Earth is like lifting a full gas tanker to the top of a skyscraper. What if you could just lift the empty truck and fill it once it's up there? That's what SpaceX is doing. It's not just about physics, it's symbolic. It says we're not tourists in space anymore. We're builders, settlers, crazy to think. If this works, a single human-rated starship could be supported by an entire fleet of tanker missions, refueling again and again, like a pit stop on the way to Mars. But it's risky. If refueling fails, the mission fails, period. So the big question is, is this sustainable? Can they really launch, dock, and transfer cryogenic fuel? Dozens? How SpaceX executes orbital refueling with Starship tankers. As of early 2025, multiple Starship tankers have been spotted at the build site in Starbase, Texas. One full-scale prototype has already been moved to the launch area, likely for structural fit tests and early stage plumbing validation. These tankers look nearly identical to the standard Starship but they're optimized for one job, carrying and transferring propellant in space. Internally, they feature a simplified payload section and a larger volume allocated to the main methane and LOX tanks. Each tanker includes a header tank system, smaller internal tanks designed to manage propellant positioning in microgravity. This is critical in zero G fuel floats freely, so header tanks act as pressure-fed reservoirs during delicate maneuvers like docking and fluid transfer. Now let's talk sequence. A Starship crew or cargo vehicle reaches low Earth orbit. Then, one or more tankers follow, each launching, docking, and offloading fuel in a chain-like operation. This is not a one-off event. It could take up to 10 flights to fully fuel one deep space starship. Fuel transfer likely occurs through a rear-mounted quick disconnect port, visible in some high-res satellite photos and unofficial renders. It appears to be located around the engine section with a protruding structure suspected to house mechanical arms or alignment actuators. We've also seen road-transported sub-assemblies that fans believe are mock-ups of this interface, though no official confirmation has been released. The physical configuration suggests a rear-to-rear -rear docking system, aligning two starships nose-to-nose -nose or end-to-end. -end. There may be dual ports, one for structural connection, one for fluid transfer, a detail hinted at in recent blueprints leaked through engineering forums. Community members tracking flight paths and tank pressures have speculated that SpaceX is rehearsing these sequences on Earth with cold gas simulations, using ground-based tanks and chill-down tests. It's all still in prototype stages, but the pieces are moving and fast. Fuel transfer tech Pathfinder and Quick Disconnect. Just last month, we spotted Pathfinder hardware being moved onto the integration stand at Starbase. Technicians were seen pulling protective covers, aligning struts, 
and attaching what looked like a mock quick disconnect assembly near the aft end of a full-size Starship section. This test article, known as Pathfinder, isn't built to fly. It's a ground-based simulation platform designed to practice how two starships would physically and mechanically connect in orbit. And the key interface? That's the Quick Disconnect, or QD. It's a metallic coupling system, almost claw-like in design, mounted toward the aft section, just above the engine bells. It includes a pivoting arm, several circular ports, and what appears to be a locking collar mechanism. Think of it like a massive space-grade gas pump, but one that has to work in microgravity, under extreme cold and with zero margin for error. Well, you may be wondering, why all this focus on hardware alignment? Because in orbit, you don't get a second try. The QD needs to latch, seal, and hold two 100-ton structures together, all while cryogenic methane and liquid oxygen flow through at high pressure. Quick Disconnect isn't just a fancy valve. It's the core of the in-space fueling chain. Pathfinder helps engineers debug the choreography, approach angle, arm extension, seal pressure, latch engagement. Each connection could take minutes, maybe seconds, but every step has to be flawless. How would this hold up in orbit? What happens if alignment fails mid-transfer? We suspect this may end up being the same interface used on Artemis supporting starships, meaning it directly supports NASA's moon ambitions. And if it scales reliably, starship refueling at scale becomes possible. Multiple tanker flights, rapid turnarounds, even fuel depots in cislunar orbit, all built around this one point of connection. This is exciting stuff. Every bolt turned on Pathfinder is a step closer to something historic. Can't wait to see the first full-stack demo flight with real QD docking. All signs point to this, being on track for this year's milestone test campaign. The risks. Why orbital refueling is a massive gamble. The great news is SpaceX just cleared another major hurdle. The FAA has officially approved Starship's next orbital test flight. And NASA has reiterated that in-orbit refueling remains a key part of the Artemis architecture. But behind these headlines lies an enormous technical gamble. Let's rewind a bit. The idea of refueling in orbit isn't new. The Gemini program in the 1960s explored docking, and the ISS today does fluid transfers, but at low volumes and under controlled conditions. What SpaceX is attempting? It's several magnitudes harder. Full-scale cryogenic propellant transfer in orbit between two giant reusable rockets. So far, testing has stayed on Earth. We've seen Pathfinder simulations, cold flow tests, chill downs, and even partial tank pressurizations. But assuming all goes well, the next phase could involve a full docking demo between two starships perhaps late this year. Sounds promising, right? But here's the problem. Refueling in space is like building a gas station in mid-air during a storm using robots. You're trying to line up two metal giants moving at 27,000 kilometers per hour, get them to dock without damage and pump ultra-cold, volatile fuel with zero leaks. There's no room for error. If the quick disconnect fails to seal, if tank pressure drops mid-transfer, if alignment falters by even a degree, the entire mission is compromised. And let's remember, a Mars or Moon-bound starship depends on multiple successful tanker launches. So one technical glitch, it ripples across the entire launch chain. According to a NASA Systems Readiness Review published last quarter, the refueling sequence is considered a single-point mission failure risk. Note, that means if it doesn't work, the rest of the mission cannot proceed. I wouldn't be surprised if the first few attempts fall short. 
This seems like a critical moment in how we define what's possible and what's not for deep space logistics. The system is beautiful in theory, but in practice, it's unforgiving. Why this technology matters for the Moon and Mars? Just released this week, new thermal imagery from Lab Padre shows active ground simulations of Starship's fuel line redundancy systems. It's the clearest sign yet that SpaceX is gearing up for orbital refueling to become routine, not just experimental. Let's break it down. Here's how the technology will likely unfold in a real mission scenario. A cargo or crew starship reaches low Earth orbit. Over several days, tanker starships launch one by one, each docking in sequence. Using the quick disconnect system, Cryogenic methane and LOX are transferred with precision under microgravity conditions. Once fully fueled, the primary starship boosts toward the Moon or Mars, carrying more mass than any rocket in history. It's gigantic, it's delicate, and it unlocks a level of mission flexibility we've never had before. A lot of people are curious about one thing. Can this scale for Mars? That's the big unknown. Mars missions demand more propellant, longer windows, and extreme fault tolerance. According to Ryan Hansen's latest breakdown, SpaceX is developing failover protocols that include automated shutdowns, valve isolation tests, and real-time data sync with ground control. If a pump overheats or a seal falters, the system can isolate that line without aborting the whole mission. That's huge. It means refueling might not be all or nothing. It can happen in controlled phases with built-in resilience. Photos from NASA Spaceflight.com's live stream even show dedicated vent ports believed to help manage boil-off pressure, a critical aspect in long-duration Mars fueling chains. Of course, None of this removes risk entirely, but it shows one thing clearly. This isn't reckless ambition, it's engineered confidence. From Artemis lunar landers to future Mars transfer vehicles, orbital refueling is the core enabler. Without it, we're stuck with single-shot missions and limited cargo. With it, the game changes.